So when you're, when you're campaigning, it's really important that you have a consistent message. And consistent messaging will help bring clarity to people who are within the campaign or working on the campaign. So everyone agrees that this is what we are saying and this is what we're spinning, spinning out to the public. Now we're almost done. You've got a strategy that hangs together. Now we have to explain it to other people. We're gonna get those key facts and insights and turn them into messages that average people can understand. What we're doing here is developing the key messages that you'll be using to engage decision makers, engage new supporters, and engage the media in your campaign. Look at, look at all the background information that you've been able to find and turn those insights into something that backs your campaign, right? So it's about like turn, getting all the information that you've found and turning that into three to five lines that you can use to talk about your campaign. Those three to five lines have to be really engaging. Try to get someone to verify them who's a policy person. In the example of the school, you'd get, try to get a planning expert to verify them and just make sure that what you're saying holds, holds weight. And so then when you go to meet your decision maker, you have strong talking points here where you have that sort of substance to back your campaign. And then when you're talking to media, you also come out to have substance to back your campaign and say, look, we think these three things. If what you're doing is quite politically controversial, then that's incredibly important too. I mean, I would take those messages to your expert and just say, do you endorse this? Can we publicly say that you can endorse this message? Or if they don't want to publicly endorse it, do you feel comfortable with the way that we're sort of saying this? Does that make sense? Or is that absolutely, you know, something Pauline Hansen would say? You want to build as many different insights as possible into your campaign, right? Like, you, you want to look at it maybe, for, so if we look about it from the example of the school, you'd want to look at, like, the, the growth in the area as one, as one element. You want to be looking at the demand on the current school in the area as, you know, a potential message that you could spit out from the campaign. You also want to look at, like, um, what the government's overarching policy around education is. Um, around this and saying like the government has committed to build 2,000 schools, it's only built 50, you know, and none in the highest growth areas. So it's like thinking about ways that you can then play onto, you know, some of the, uh, some of the current policy around um, what you're trying to do or the current sort of decisions that have been made around the issue that you're trying to affect and then turn them into political capital and weight for your campaign. if you haven't got enough, you need to go and speak. So we look at that allies list, figure out the, who are the people that wanna support your campaign. More coffees, more drinks, more finding out what the background information is behind your campaign. Doing that Rico, Rico work to like basically understand where everyone is at behind your campaign. This is really important when you're working in coalition. Different allies come on to support your campaign. You can be like, yes, you're on our campaign. Absolutely, we want you to be part of our campaign. But these are the messages that we agree to here. Um, because sometimes in coalition, some partners like to go off and say other things about the campaign. And that's when the campaign will have vulnerabilities because that partner can be attacked and then the coalition and your objective can be attacked. So it's really important that everyone who's part of the campaign, external spokespeople, you know, all your social channels, your website, are all singing from the same song, song sheet. Because the minute it, people start saying different things across the media, you lose consistency, it means you're vulnerable. It will always take a long time to agree to the messages, the key messages, because you need to bring in a whole bunch of experts and other people around your campaign to verify your messages. And so when you are in the media and you are out there and you do get hit by people who are saying, no, we disagree with what this campaign is saying, you do have something to come back with. If you've done this right, your messages are based on real facts, are kind of clickbaity and a bit provocative, but really easy to understand. Yeah, I mean, there's no point spending three days writing a Facebook post. You should do it in five minutes and push it out. But the best things that we've learned is that two words and emoji is the best way to engage people around a health issue. So it's like, let's do that because it's going to create more impact than spending, you know, writing an essay on Facebook. And, and it took us three months to get to that hypothesis where we realised that two words and an emoji is what works. And, you know, that was through intense testing of like all different sorts of messages. So it's about trying as many different things as possible, seeing what connects and works with supporters and getting as much stuff out as possible.